My husband and I got married less than a year ago. For most of our relationship, one of our biggest issues and causes of arguments has been his family. My husband has a large family, including his half-siblings. He's one of 12 children. This includes his twin brother Sam, who has autism. One of his younger brothers also has autism, but is higher functioning. Before we married, one of my husband's brothers moved in with us for eight months. I knew going into it that it would be temporary and therefore okayed it. However, I made it clear then that his family member staying with us wasn't really ideal for me. Both of my husband's autistic brothers have spent most of their lives living with their grandpa. However, in 2018, they decided it was no longer appropriate for Sam to live with their grandpa due to his higher care needs. Sam moved in with their oldest sister and has lived there ever since. Sam is primarily non-verbal and although he has some independent skills, he needs help with everyday tasks. He shouldn't really be left home alone for more than an hour. My sister-in-law's youngest child left home early last year and she plans to move in with her eldest son and grandkids. She can only do this if she finds Sam a new home. Recently, my husband came to me and told me he wanted Sam to move in with us. He argued we have the space and he has the time to look after Sam. He thinks that, as Sam's twin, he must be the one to take Sam in. He also said their sister is still going to be spending a lot of time with Sam. I felt bad, but I told him I didn't want Sam to live with this. This would be a long-term living arrangement, not temporary like his other brother. I told him he should have told me before marriage that he would want his brother to live with this. I feel because he didn't, it's my right to say no now. This big change will affect the rest of the foreseeable future and our plans to start a family. Yesterday, my husband and I were at my sister-in-law's home discussing Sam's future and I told her I didn't want Sam to move in with us. I suggested that if she stayed in the house to look after Sam, my husband and I could try to help her more. She became annoyed with me after that and complained she'd been looking after her younger siblings since kindergarten, became a teen mom and raised seven kids of her own. She could finally now have the time to do what she wanted. I expressed my opinion that she was being cold to Sam, who is incredibly attached to her. I could see him getting very depressed while living away from her. She got angry at me after that. Although my husband said he would only take Sam in with my consent, I can tell he's going to hold it against me if I don't. Am I being the idiot? I think they're being very short-sighted about Sam's future and all the siblings have flat out refused him going into a home. Edit, their dad passed away and their mom has been out of the picture for a long time. They were raised by their grandpa and his wife, now ex-wife, since they are around seven years old. My husband and I got married less than a year ago. Makes me wonder if he was already planning this. None of this is your issue. They can care for him. You didn't sign up for this. Not the idiot. Did you miss how OP called the sister-in-law cold for not wanting to take care of Sam? The same thing that OP also doesn't want to do. You are the idiot. Not because you're unwilling to take care of Sam, but because you did a really great job of emotional blackmail on the one who has been Sam's caregiver. You don't think she realizes what this will do to Sam, not being with her after so long? And your only solution is to leave the burden to one family member and try to be a bigger help. Try. Pathetic. You did marry into this family, correct? Sister-in-law's been looking after her younger siblings since kindergarten, became a teen mom, and raised seven kids of her own. Seven kids? This woman is tired. Having seven kids is a choice. The first might have been an accident, but the rest? OP, do not take Sam in. As harsh as that sounds, you would be signing up for a lifetime of caregiving whether you want to or not. Don't let others coerce you. I would give up the husband first, honestly. It's fair for your husband to feel a responsibility toward his twin brother. Still, he should feel a greater responsibility toward his marriage. All the other siblings who don't want him to go into a home need to step up. When I lived with my parents, I did various odd jobs around the house to earn money. Cleaning the rain gutters, replacing the air filters, changing the hoses on the washing machine, etc. My mom would pay me for these jobs, though it wasn't much, usually $20, and it was more for me to have some spending cash while I was still in school. This was fine when I was living with my parents. Now, however, I live in another city and work as a handyman. I typically charge by the hour, materials, and a trip fee if it's out of the area I usually service. The other day, Mom called and asked if I could come over and replace the hoses underneath the bathroom sink, as there was a leak. I said, sure, no problem. I was coming from another job and didn't have the materials I knew I would need, so I went to the home centre and got some hoses and new shut-off valves on my way to my parents' house. 
Working under a sink is uncomfortable as it involves lying on your back and using a special wrench to disconnect the hoses. I was hoping that I would simply be able to change the hoses and be good to go. However, the valves under the sink started leaking. I was expecting this, which is why I got the shut-off valves. Unfortunately, replacing them meant shutting off the water to the entire house, removing the old valves, cleaning and applying flux to the copper pipes, then soldering on the new valves. But once I installed everything, it was working and there were no leaks. When I was finished, I gave my mom a copy of the invoice and told her she could send me the check later as I had another job I needed to get to. She said, oh, that's all right, and handed me $20. I asked what the $20 was for, and she told me it was for the entire job. I told her it wasn't enough and that I expected the rest of the money when she wrote the check. She said she never agreed to pay me that much, even though I told her when she initially called me that I would be charging my usual rate. She asked me why I was charging so much when $20 used to be the amount she paid me. I told her that $20 was fine when I was living with her and still in school, but this is my actual job now, hence why I'm charging the same rate I charge my other customers, something I thought she already knew. She asked me if I could give her a family discount, and I agreed to waive the trip fee, though I still insisted she pay me for everything else, as I was doing this job as part of my normal workday and I couldn't make a living on $20 per project. We argued about it for several minutes and I was running late for my next job, so I packed up my stuff and headed out. When I got home, both my parents were on my case about not giving them a family discount and I reiterated that this was my job and I couldn't make a living constantly giving discounts. I feel like my prices are reasonable and my friends are on my side, but my parents continue to give me a hard time. Am I the idiot? Edit, this wasn't during my free time, this was part of my regular workday and I did waive my trip fee not the idiot. You told her in advance what fee you would be charging. That was the time for her to raise objections and ask about family discount, but she didn't. She just presumed you'd not argue because family. Everyone's the idiot here. Mom shouldn't have just handed you the $20 like you're a kid. That would kind of irk me too. But dude, this is your mom. The woman who birthed you, raised you, fed you, drove you and made it possible for you to become the handyman you are today. Is it really so hard to just help her out of good conscience and not for a check? Whatever floats your boat, dude, but you seem stingy as heck. I think it's funny that when it's an artist, say a photographer, not getting paid by a mom or a sister to photograph a wedding, everyone says they're a professional and it's abhorrent that they aren't paid, but you as a handyman should just give over for free? No, you are a professional asking to get paid for your work. The fact that you came immediately was a family benefit on its own. It takes me days to get my handyman to come to my house as he's very good and charges a reasonable rate. So, of course, he's frequently booked up and I have to wait my turn. That's normal and expected. OP keeps bringing up, it was during my regular workday. Dude, you scheduled it during your workday. Why did you schedule this job as regular work? Why does one simple job where you give a 25 to 50% discount on the regular fee make such a huge dent in your income? Do you even like your parents? Maybe your mom should bill you for everything she's done for you. Food, lodging, clothing, et al. I would argue that you have a moral obligation to help your parents and not treat them the same as any other random paying customer. I loathe when people try to bully because family, but in this case, you are the idiot. You keep saying that you waived the out of town fee, then state it's normally $10. How generous you are. I, female 33, am getting married soon, which has been planned for the last two years. My sister, female 36, has just split with her husband and started a new relationship with one of her colleagues, we'll call him Brandon, who I've briefly met a couple of times before but don't know very well. He's nice enough, but my future husband has never met him, and like I say, I don't really know him myself. My sister mentioned to Brandon that she was my maid of honour and that I would be getting married within the first week of their new relationship. Before my sister and her husband, let's call him Reese Split, they were both invited to the wedding as they'd been married for 15 years, so Reese was a big part of the family. Brandon automatically assumed he was invited to the wedding in Reese's place, which I didn't like, but sort of accepted that she'd won a plus one, and Reese wouldn't want to come now anyway, given the situation, so I let it go. She then informed me that Brandon had told his daughter, Kelly, female tween, who he co-parents with his ex, that they were both coming to my wedding, so Kelly was really excited. I reminded my sister that we're having a child-free wedding, which was communicated to everyone who was invited to attend, as we ourselves don't have children, don't want children, and so don't want children at our wedding. 
which all our family and friends have been fine with. I've met Kelly and she is, unfortunately, a complete brat and definitely not a child we would want at our wedding, regardless of whether we're having a child-free wedding or not. My sister thought our refusal was down to the cost of adding her as a guest when we'd already reached maximum numbers, so she initially offered to pay for her place. I told her it wasn't about the money, but because firstly, I don't like Kelly, and secondly, Brandon overstepped by assuming his child could come without even trying to talk to my future husband first. I also calmly told her that she knew we were having a child-free wedding and should have told him straight away to avoid this happening. It's also unfair to our other friends and family members who've arranged childcare for their children to respect our wishes. She's now calling me an idiot because it will make things difficult for her when she tells him that he can't bring Kelly as she's excited about going to a wedding. I told her that wasn't my problem as I wasn't responsible for him trying to muscle in on a family event he wasn't even invited to in the first place. I've offered to talk to him for her, to keep the peace, but she said I'd just end up being more of an idiot to him than I am already for telling her that her new boyfriend's child can't come to my wedding. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You didn't have to tell her you don't like Kelly. It's enough that you're having a child-free wedding. It's not your problem he made this assumption. It's not your problem. Your sister didn't automatically correct him. Let her tell him. If he doesn't want to come, so be it. If she decides to step down, let her. Do not give in to any keep the peace arguments. You will regret it. If you think he'll bring his daughter, make sure there's someone to turn them away from both the ceremony and reception. He may try the, but she'll just eat from my plate trick. Tell your sister the invitation was to her and her husband, not her and a plus one, and her boyfriend is not invited. If the boyfriend comes, I guarantee she will neglect her maid of honor duties to spend time with him. The former brother-in-law should come anyway. It's about your relationship with him. 15 years is a lot of bonding. At the very least, to invite him, he may decline, but not to invite is harsh. I told her it's not about the money, but because firstly, I don't like Kelly. Why on earth did you need to do that? That was stupid. Now it's likely that your sister will never be around you with Brandon or Kelly, or maybe without them either. It was petty and uncalled for, and you could have easily considered Brandon's enthusiasm at coming to your wedding as a good thing, where he would be in a context to meet your family. Or you could have pretended to. But I get it, you're the bride, and yes, yes, it's your day, blah, blah, blah. You are the idiot. Grow up. I'm a 27-year-old male. Around a month and a half ago, our department cut its funding and I got laid off. No promises of returning either. I'm a case manager. Honestly, after three years of it, I'm not ready to return either. I only got paid $18 an hour and was stressed out almost daily with a big caseload of clients. Since being laid off, I probably applied to 15 different places. I lost count. My mother is helping me as well. I've had no follow-up phone calls and can't believe it's this hard. Eight years ago, you could just walk in anywhere, hand in a resume and get an interview the same day. Now everything is online. No personableness at all. The only place that called me back was an entry-level stocking position and they called and told me they had other more qualified candidates. LOL. Here's where my mother comes into play. She sent me getting frustrated about the job search and sent me links to places hiring in the area. The problem is my mother is very old-fashioned. She's in her 60s and just thinks that I'll get hired anywhere because I have a bachelor's degree. Just yesterday, she sent me a supervisor position at a factory and said, you have a bachelor's degree, you'll be at the top of the list of candidates. Like mom, another one just told me they had more qualified people to stock the shelves. She gets upset when I say I won't apply because I'm wasting my time. She feels I'm being lazy. We got into it and I thanked her for the help, but told her that times are changing and that it's just not easy to get a decent job anymore. I can appreciate my mother's help, but I don't like being put down for being lazy when it doesn't make sense to waste my time. Not the idiot. I understand your frustration. Everyone these days has a bachelor's degree. Work experience costs for far more in this day and age. That having been said, it wouldn't have hurt to apply. I know it's disheartening to get yet another rejection, but occasionally one of these long shots may actually pay off. Good luck, OP. Keep grinding, something will come up. You are the idiot. 15 applications over 6 weeks seems like less than minimal effort, especially in the modern job market. Yes, things changed, but she wasn't completely wrong. It's a numbers game now. Apply for everything. I was laid off in early 2023. I looked for 14 weeks but never had one day without pay because looking was a job itself. 
Also, I'm a bit perplexed by your claim that eight years ago, walking off the street with a resume was enough to get a job. Are you sure you don't mean 80 years ago? Like, applications have been online only for a lot more than eight years. 10 and 15 years ago, we were making fun of our parents for telling us to walk down the street with a paper resume in hand. Gotta say, I agree with your mom. It sounds like you're being lazy and or reluctant to get back into the workforce. 